waiting to order some new ones. But this is good. I changed the address and I crossed out Patrick's name. He's not on the account anymore. <clears throat> so, there shouldn't be any problem. I initialed it. Why are you waiting? What? To order new checks. Well, I just have a lot of these left. I always ordered 800 at a time, and Patrick left at 285. I remember because uh, I went to Elizabeth Arden's and had the complete works done that day, and the amount of the check was the same as the number. I must have sent something, huh? So I tried to make that last ditch effort. There I was all dolled up in this fabulous silk outfit that clung in all the right places. Hell, at least I looked great when he dropped the bomb. I really did. Anyway, uh, this is the address on my driver's license. My license has a two-year extension. You know what a hassle the DMV is. So it, it just seemed easier to use the rest of these up than to have to change everything. Besides, I'm probably saving a tree somewhere in the bargain. You write that many checks? I like writing checks. I like the idea of giving someone a worthless little piece of paper and they give you something back. It's, it's like magic, you know? My father opened up a checking account for me when I was 15. And the first time I walked into Jurgensen's, I felt so grown up. I bought $30 worth of eclairs. I had that account until I married Patrick. You know, I hated sharing this account with him. He was always after me to balance it, and he'd get mad if I'd forget to record a check. I always knew how much was in there. You don't balance your account? Well, sort of, roughly. I got a couple of hundred dollars. That doesn't bother you? Yeah, I've never bounced a check. Let's talk about this next time. Fine. Uh, See you next week. Rosie. What? You forgot to sign it. Living in time and feeling every moment. Do I walk into tomorrow? The identifiable remains of 76 animals were found in Mr. Salazar's backyard. 17 dogs, 12 cats, 22 chickens, half a dozen rabbits, 12 snakes, three pigeons, and four bats. These collars were found there, too. They came off the necks of loving, devoted, unselfish companions. Mr. Salazar and his disciples What's the killed them, Nothing. crushed their bones. Don't worry, we find burned them on an altar, sending a twisted prayer rising into some dark heaven. Now, I don't know if Mr. Salazar's prayers were answered, but I hope this jury answers mine. Bring back a guilty verdict on all counts. Thank you. Counsel? Uh, Your Honor, I'd like to request a brief recess before summation. Well, it's later than I thought. We'll adjourn till tomorrow morning at 9 o'clock. We'll hear final defense arguments then. Thank you. All rise. 
Don't worry. You saved my boy. Yes. I'm, I'm doing the best I can, Mrs. Salazar. Oh, yes. You keep it. It's a gift. Rosie. Who's this mean? D, D, L, and B. Dunn, Davis, Logan, and Bradley. They're representing your husband. I know who they're representing. Why are they calling here? Perhaps because they can't find you at home. Here's a man waiting to see you. Is he a lawyer? No, he's from your Mercedes dealer. Thank you. So what seems to be the problem? I'm afraid your car won't be ready today. Why not? They promised oh, me. I know, but there's been some complications. Complications like what? Uh, excuse me, I don't mean to be a sexist, but do you have a working knowledge of internal combustion engines? Not exactly. Well, then your car is very sick. How sick? Don't plan any long trips. I'm terribly sorry for the inconvenience, but uh, we have a loaner car for you. It's a 450 SL convertible. I hope that will be all right. Uh, yes, that'll be just fine. Thank you. It's blue. I have a yellow one, if you prefer. No, no blue. I, I... Actually, I look good in blue. <laughs> I'm sure you do. <laughs> uh, excuse me. <laughs> oh, is, is this going to be expensive? Well, there are a lot of things wrong with the car. It hasn't been properly serviced in quite a while. I must say that your husband doesn't treat his cars very well. Oh, he did. I'm divorced, or about to be soon. Oh, I'm sorry. I didn't know. Your husband's name was still on the computer. I'll, uh, Delete him. <laughs> Be my guest. The name's O'Neill now. Rosie O'Neill. Johan. Nisen. What time do you get off work? I beg your pardon? For the driver. Oh, uh, I never know. It varies, you know. <laughs> oh, bless you. Thank you. It's this dusty office. It hasn't been cleaned since 1927. <laughs> The driver will pick you up. Call that number when you're ready. We like to keep our customers happy. Oh, thank you. Damn, I don't believe this! Yeah, yeah, I know, I, I know! I get the guy probation, we walk out. First thing he does, he goes to the John and shoots up. He doesn't have a vein left in his arm, so he pops one right in his head, right here. Bam! Passes out. Does a swan dive from the toilet, head first, right at the feet of the assistant DA. Yeah, Marty there? Oh, Rosie. I didn't know you drove a Mercedes. Well, at least it's not a hit and run. Nope, just hit and maim while under the influence of alcohol. So, you have any questions? Why can't you just lob an easy one across the plate every once in a while? What's the matter, Rose? Are you having a bad season? Having a bad life. <laughs> I got traded, you know. Yeah. So, it's over? What? Your divorce. You signed the final decree? No. I'm going to. I just, uh, I wanted to look at the settlement one last time. See if I missed anything, make sure it's right. Once they sign the final, that's it. You all right? Oh. If I'm brave, you're braver. You can't 
go wrong Your heart won't ever waver Walk, walk on through This is Johan from Sierra Motors Your car will be ready tomorrow I'm keeping the convertible I'm sorry, but you can't keep the convertible <laughs> I look forward to seeing you tomorrow Goodbye Fiona, are you there? Are you not picking up? You know I hate it when you do this. Fiona, did you buy a new car? Marion Whitfield said she saw you driving a blue Mercedes. A convertible. Have you lost your mind? Call me. Good night. Night, Mother. I'm calling from the law office of Dunn Davis, Logan, and Bradley. We represent Mr. Patrick Ginty. We hoped you'd have responded by now. All the divorce decree needs is your signature. If there's some problem, please call me. We would like to expedite this matter. Mr. Salazar, you've been found guilty of receiving stolen property, excessive cruelty to animals, operating a kennel without a license, and several other lesser, though equally inhumane, counts. I therefore sentence you to three years in state Devil. prison. No, three years. I'd like to thank the jury for its time and contribution. This court is now in recess. All right. Curse upon you! Damn you to hell, you bitch! A curse on you! A curse on you! All right, look at paragraph four, line 20, division of stock. You got it? Okay, now read the percentages. That's not exactly what we agreed to. Well, call my soon-to-be ex. Ask him. I'm sorry, I won't be home. So send a messenger. Look, I want this over with, too, all right? But I want it to be right. Yeah. Goodbye. This will help fortify your aura. What's the garlic for? Mrs. Salazar. She's not a vampire. Worse. Very bad juju. Can't be too careful. You know, you're wasting your time and your garlic. I am not superstitious. Ooh, salt. Has magical powers. Keeps away the spirits. Could you save a little for my french fries? <laughs> Listen, do you read your horoscope? Don't even answer. I know that you do. I've seen you. I've looked at it every once in a while, just for the fun of it. See if it comes close. And when it comes close, do you believe it more? Listen, there's a lot of things in this world that we can't explain. Maybe we shouldn't even try, but we do, because we want the answers. Is the guy who lights a candle in a cathedral any different than the shaman tossing bones in his cave? Hey, I believe in whatever works. I believe that you should get out of here. I do not have time for an exorcism right now. I've got work to do. Okay, no sweat. You know, you probably don't have anything to worry about. I mean, unless she gets her hands on a personal possession, she can't make the hex work. What do you mean, personal? You know, like a lock of hair, a shoe, uh... A handkerchief. That would do it, as long as it's a personal possession. See, that's the key, that's the power, that's the ticket. That's the door. Adios. Thank you. Miss O'Neill, I'm sorry I was with a the customer. Oh. They didn't tell me you were here. I'm glad I caught you in time. I just wanted to make sure everything was all right. Oh, it looks great. <laughs> It helps if you wash them once in a while. <laughs> I'll try and remember that. Thank you. Anytime you want to borrow the convertible, it's yours. Can you do that? What about your boss? 
Well, I am the boss. I own this place. <coughs> Bless you. Sometimes I even work on the cars myself. I personally adjusted your emission control valve. Thank you. Thank you again for everything. I would like to invite you to dinner tonight. Oh, I couldn't. <coughs> I see. I'm sorry. I shouldn't have assumed. <coughs> No, 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 it's, it's, um, it's just that I'm busy tonight, but tomorrow night would be great. <coughs> Bless you. Do you have allergies or something? Temptation. What? It's your perfume. I'm allergic to it. I've developed all kinds of allergies since I moved to L.A. I'd offer you my handkerchief, but I already gave it away. Oh, it's all right. I'm, I'm fine. <coughs> I'll wear a different perfume tomorrow night. Bye. Bye. What'd you have for lunch? What? This place stinks like garlic and there's salt all over the floor. Oh, Jeff's trying to ward off evil spirits. It's crazy. That's what I told him. Salt doesn't work. You gotta use holy water. Salt only works for uh, minor demons, succubi, and insurance salesmen. Well, it's good to see there's another skeptic in the house. I just believe in covering my butt. Yeah? Who? Oh, oh, yeah, put him on. Johan? Yeah, how much? For one tiny little hit? Well, at least the insurance will... It doesn't? What, didn't he pay the premium? Canceled when? Are you sure? Why didn't he pay that? What? Uh. Never mind. No. Uh, yeah. Go ahead and fix it. I'm looking forward to dinner, too. I will. Okay, bye. You told the police you ran over the man? I'm the one who called him. I dialed 911. And what happened? They tried to stop the bleeding, you know? I mean, the guy was in a lot of pain. He kept on screaming for a, a doctor. He said, give me 200 doctors. Get 200 doctors. I don't know. How is he? It's holding on. So the police showed up, then what happened? This cop asked me if I'd been drinking that night. I told him I had two beers after work. What do you do? I got a pool cleaning job during the day. At, uh, at night, I work cooking at this Italian restaurant in Igoa, Via Roma. Do you usually drink after work? I, I always celebrate. I found out my, my wife's expecting. Congratulations. I only had two beers. Your blood alcohol level was 0 0.08. Now, it's only a fraction over the limit, but technically, the law says you are drunk. I've been drunk before. I wasn't drunk that night. And you didn't resist arrest? Well, this cop tried to take my license away, so I didn't give it to him. He can do that now. On the spot. It's a new law. I didn't know. Anyway, when I didn't give it to him, 
He took my head, right, and he slammed it down on the hood of his car. Look, I never saw the old man. He came out of nowhere. If I would have seen him, I would have stopped. I never done nothing wrong in my whole life. You are the one. Me? The one with the curse. Excuse me. I know how you must feel. This is a terrible curse. Terrible. She is a very powerful woman. Very powerful. But not as powerful as me. You need my help. And how much does this help of yours cost? Two hundred dollars. Forget it. You don't fix these now. You have bad luck the rest of your life. Now that you mention it, I do feel an accident coming on. Beat it. For everyone else, they sing. Where have you been? I have been looking all over for you. I was getting my cleaning, and some tow truck picked up my new loan car. I swear they painted that curb yellow while I was inside. I drove all the way from first in Alameda. What's up? Nothing, just some bad luck. When did he die? A couple of hours ago. And that's the bad news. Now you want to hear the really bad news. The DA just filed for gross vehicular manslaughter. Why did this have to happen to him? One hundredth of a point, it'd have been different. It's not fair. Listen, Rosie, if you want, I can put Jeff on this one. Don't you think I can handle it? Of course I do. I just think you have enough on your mind. Meaning? You've already got one fool for a client. Zach Logan told me that you're representing yourself. Rosie, do you want me to review your divorce settlement for you? Because I will, and I will tell you if I think it's unfair. What do you know about divorce? You've been married forever. And I've been divorced hundreds of times, up here. Every time that I get angry at Harriet, I imagine myself ripping her to pieces in court, reducing her to tears. I destroyed her. I was brilliant, ruthless, a little cruel. I got the house, the kids, the cars, both dogs. I always won, but I always regretted it. But I wasn't angry anymore, and I could just go on with the rest of my life. This isn't about my being angry. I just want to make sure that everything's right before I sign the final decree, that's all. Uh, I forgot something I had to read tonight. You know, you ought to pay more attention, especially with this bad luck thing hanging over you. I didn't fall in, did I? 
Yeah, thanks to me. True. Thanks, Hank. Good night. If you didn't think it was bad luck, why are you taking the stairs? I have a delivery for Rosie O'Neill. That's you? Who's it from? Dunn, Davis, Logan, and... Ma'am? Uh, supposed to get a signature. Uh, they told me to wait while you read over these papers and sign them. Ma'am? They said I should wait as long as it takes. <laughs> Ma'am, what do you want me to do? Leave them. And go away. Multiple fractures of both legs, uh, crushed pelvis, loss of one ear, and three fingers of his left hand were severed. And the victim still retained consciousness. Yeah, he had a strong will to live. He, he kept asking for doctors all the way to the hospital. Uh, 200 doctors, 200 doctors. That's what he kept saying over and over. What was Mr. Abbott's blood alcohol? 0 0.08. And did Mr. Abbott resist arrest? He did. Thank you, Officer Baxter. No further questions? Officer Baxter, you do concede that Mr. Abbott had no difficulty walking the line. That's correct. But I've also seen drunk men tap dance before. <laughs> Hank, can I borrow your nose? No. I'll give it back. Come on, I need a man's opinion. Soap. What? That's my opinion. I think the best smell on a woman is the clean, fresh smell of soap. And after that, I'm rather fond of sweat. I like the way women smell on their own without any help. Whoa, somebody drop a bottle of perfume in here or what? Hi, George. I'm trying new fragrances. What do you think? My mother. What? My mother wears that. What's up, G? Any luck? No, not a witness in the block. Plenty after the fact, that, but no one who uh, actually saw it happen. Mm. What about his boss in the restaurant? Uh, he's on vacation out of the country. Yeah. I think he's worried about serving the kid beers after hours. 
I don't expect he'll be back till after the trial's over. <coughs> uh, what are you trying to say to this guy? Say? Well, you know, uh, perfume sends a message to a man's brain. I mean, what is it you're trying to tell your date about yourself? I'm interested in a non-committed way, open to exploring the possibilities. Would he be willing to submit to a blood test? Oh, well, then you're basically looking for something floral, light on the citrus, with just a hint of hostility, something very 90s. <laughs> something like that. Ooh, this is good. This is you. This is nail polish remover. Oh. <laughs> Thank you, George. Oh, anytime. Thank you. Sorry I'm late. Oh, that's quite all right. You're here. That's all that counts. Cheers. Cheers. Thank you for giving me a chance to explain what happened to me the other night. I'm sure that you were ready to kill me. I was. <laughs> this better be good. It was just one of those things. My plane was delayed leaving San Francisco. And, and we were, how do you call it, uh, stacked up hmm. over LAX. Then we were diverted to Ontario Airport, an hour and a half late landing. By the time I got to a telephone, I tried to call you, but there was no answer. I, I drove over to your house, but all the lights were off. Oh, God, I'm so sorry. Really, I, I don't think it'll stain much. <laughs> really. It's your perfume. I'm not wearing any. I didn't want to take a chance. <laughs> oh. I was afraid of this. What? This happened once before with a woman I was involved with. We were to be married until I found, I, I found out. Found out what? I was allergic to her. You're kidding. Oh, I wish that I was. Look at my eyes. They're turning red, right? When they're starting to itch. But about 10 minutes, I start to break out into hives. I don't believe it. I'm sorry, Rosie. Can't you take a pill or get a shot or something? I've tried everything. I, uh, I'm afraid there's no hope for us. So sorry. I, I should leave. Please forgive me. I'm so sorry that it didn't work out better for us because, you see, I, I... I really liked you. So what do you think? It's a rock. <laughs> no, that's not just any rock. That rock's from Sedona. 
It's magnetic. It can help you line up your meridians. My meridians are just fine. Thank you. What is this? These are books on metaphysics. Read them, know them, live them. Take them. Keep them. Burn them. Rosie, you have a lot of negative energy around you. You need to redirect the flow. It's okay to be happy. It's okay to let yourself enjoy life. What are you getting at? In this state of mind, you attract bad luck, misfortune, and misery. I had a couple of little teeny accidents. Big deal. There are no accidents. Sigmund Freud. <laughs> a fist in the face can be quite painful. Rosie O'Neill. You see, that is just what I mean. Negative, dark, pessimistic. Lighten up. Hey, Linda, wait, I want to talk to you. Call my office. I, it's about the Abbott case. Hey, call my office. Listen, call my office, Rosie. Listen, I've thought about it a lot, and I'm ready to accept your offer. What offer? Reduce plea, involuntary manslaughter. I never made that offer. But you would if you thought about it. Oh. What the kid offered to go for help, he called the doctor. He was right on the borderline of intoxication. And this is the kind of thing that could have happened to anybody, Linda. You, me. He's not a bad kid. He just had some bad luck. Somebody put a curse on him, too? I told you she wouldn't budge. The district attorney's office gave notice that they would play hardball with DUIs. Remember, we have an election coming up this year. How's your client doing? Mr. Abbott did not take it well. So she gets a conviction and you appeal. Yeah, well, the way my luck's been going, I'll lose that, too. So I heard. What have you heard? I heard you're unlucky. Back then, you've got a curse on you, so what do you expect? Et tu, Ben. Did you ever hear of the Kabbalah? It's all about Jews in the Middle Ages and magic potions and spells and numerology and superstitions. Don't cross your fingers, only button your coat from right on left. It's all a bunch of... But you know, man needs some mystery, needs some spirituality. He doesn't need excuses. Well, what do you call it when everything turns out rotten and you have no control over it? Life. We make our own luck, Rosie. All those little choices we make day in and day out add up to what we might want to call luck, you know? Whether it's good luck or bad luck, it doesn't really matter. We don't know that for certain until our life is almost over, so we have to actively keep making choices, mistakes. That's what we do. That's what keeps us moving forward. That's what makes us us. Well, thanks for the drink. My pleasure. Oh, here. I, um... I make some notes. It's nothing major. I think it's a pretty thorough document. I think it's fair. It's a good deal. Not a great deal, but a good deal. I would sign the final decree. Is that your advice? Legally, yeah. Now, if you want my personal opinion... Do I have a choice? My personal opinion is, although I don't think you really want to hear it, grow up. I beg your pardon. Grow up, Rosie. Come on, get on with your life. Miss O'Neill, oh. I'm having a half price special. Really? I will remove any curse or the one-time charge of a hundred dollars. Forget it. Fifty, but that's as low as I can go. No way. I stole your handkerchief from her. Would you take a check? Thank you. 
the hell is he? He called from the DMV before I left the office. There was a line. Don't worry, he'll be here. Do you have the coroner's photos? Yeah. Here, hold this. Where are the bumper hides? In there. Got them from a dealer this morning. Didn't you have the same suit on yesterday? Sweet of you to notice. I spent the night in my office. What happened to your briefcase? Providence. What? You've never heard of Providence? Yeah, it's in Rhode Island. Showtime. OK, I got to get back to the office. All right. Thanks. Thanks, Barbara. Hey. She's sitting down. I'll be right in. Come on. Well, what did you find out? Didn't you have that same suit on yesterday? George, your life is hanging by a thread. Did you get it? Got it. Oh. 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 Call Detective Nelson, get him going on this. Mm -hmm. Nice that you could join us, Counselor. I'm sorry, Your Honor. Are you ready to proceed? Yes, Your Honor. May I have permission to approach the bench? Your Honor, I would like to make a motion to introduce new evidence. Based on? There's no doubt that Bill Abbott's car did run over the victim and cause him serious injury. That is the truth. But it's also true that Mr. Abbott's was not the first car to hit him. Now, I believe I can prove that the victim entered the crosswalk and was hit by a car traveling east, a car that went through a red light and kept on going. It knocked the victim's body in the pathway of Mr. Abbott's car. When it passed by about 30 seconds later, the reason Mr. Abbott never saw him is because the victim was already down. The coroner's report indicates that the victim's legs suffered identical impact fractures approximately 14 inches above the street. The front bumper of Mr. Abbott's car is 19 inches. Your Honor. Just a moment, Miss Vargas. All right, you've heard from the paramedics and the police report that the victim kept calling for doctors, 200 doctors. He wasn't asking. He was telling. He was telling the license number of the car that hit him. This is a list of personalized plates from the Department of Motor Vehicles. There's one on there I think you'll find of interest, Your Honor. 200DRS. 200 doctors. It belongs to a woman who lives two miles from the intersection. She also drives a sedan with a 14-inch bumper. The police are on their way there now. This court will stand in recess while I confer with both counsels in my chambers. How do you feel? Like I just got my life back again. I, um, I don't know how I can ever thank you enough. Really? Well, you still face charges for driving under the influence. You may lose your license for a while, but I don't think you'll be going to jail. Thanks, Lyman. Sure. For everything. Goodbye. Goodbye. Bye. Goodbye, Patrick. It's been 
as well. Someone finds a place in your heart, they're always with you, you've always got them locked deep inside.